Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of Steelers Season Recaps. I am Nathan Osler back here for episode 2. The Steelers got a win. 26-22 over division rival Cleveland Browns. This was a win that the Steelers definitely needed going into this road trip coming up against the Raiders and the Houston Texans. Two teams that the Steelers should have good luck against. I would hope so. But this was a win that fans really were hoping for after last week's disaster against the 49ers. So going into game two, I was just hoping to see improvement from this offense. And it was different, you could say. They scored more points, but here's the problem. The defense outscored the offense of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Alex Highsmith with a touchdown. TJ Watt with a touchdown. The only offensive touchdown was the George Pickens touchdown. Everything else was field goals. And I'll give congratulations to George Pickens. By far the best game of his career. Four receptions, 127 yards, and one touchdown. His touchdown was a 71-yard pass from Kenny Pickett. He just broke free. This is this further proves the point why you have to throw the ball to George Pickens, I would think. But I want to take a look at, very quick, I want to try to make this episode a little bit shorter than the last episode, but I want to take a look at keys to victory, what happened, what was different, and what still needs change. So let's start with the what needs changed, what needs help. Let's start with the negatives before the positives. So negative number one, the entire offense. Um, I will say Kenny Pickett had a miles better game than last week, but I will say as well there's a lot of issues I still see with Kenny Pickett. I am a Kenny Pickett fan, and my personal issue, if I've noticed with him, is he needs to develop the trait of when he needs to throw the ball away, not throwing it right at the other team. There was an instance one of the members of the Browns secondary legit caught a ball from Kenny Pickett as he was throwing away and just dropped it. That sh should have been a pick, but Kenny Pickett was very lucky. And I also noticed this. Anytime Kenny Pickett is about to take a sack this game against Cleveland, he just did a little shovel pass, and one of those was almost picked off. In that instance... If you can't throw it away and you're just going to risk throwing a pick, I would just take the sack, as dumb as it sounds. But I will say Pickett looked better. 222 yards, a touchdown, one interceptions, a rating of 71.8. Um, he took two sacks this time. Compared to last week, he had five. Um, he was able to get the ball out, but at times, like I said, looked a little shaky. I think Pickett looked miles better after the first quarter. The first quarter was not a good quarter for him. It looked like a lot of last week, but he did look better this game, and I will give him that. But I do need to still – I want to see more improvement. I want to see him take that leap that we saw in the preseason. Number two of what needs to change. Um, as much as it pains me to say this, Najee Harris. This guy is struggling. Ten carries for 43 yards – his longest of the night was 21 yards. Um, average 4.3 a carry. Other than those two big runs, the 21-yarder and the one he got for a first down, Najee Harris does not look good. And I am a huge Najee Harris fan, and it is so hard trying to defend Najee Harris every week saying, oh, he just doesn't have an O-line. Oh, the offensive scheme stinks. What if, what if it's just the fact... He just does not look fast. He, he's he been compared to Derrick Henry in the past. I don't see Derrick Henry. I This is a complete new, a completely different running back that we saw Najee Harris take over in the second half last year. This looks like the first half Najee Harris we had last year. And there's been the whole debate of the whole running backs are replaceable. There's a guy on the Pittsburgh Steelers named Jalen Warren who's having himself who had himself a pretty good game, six carries for 20 yards, but receiving-wise, four receptions for 66 yards. He was one of Pickett's guys today to actually receive the ball. Had He was only one of two receivers to have over a 20-yard pass, 20-yard um, reception, that is. So Najee Harris might be in trouble if Jalen Warren keeps producing and Najee Harris is not. Um, but yeah, it's getting hard to defend Najee Harris. We're in, I think, year three or so with Najee. Last year was not that good at the start. He kind of turned on the Jets after the bye week. 
Hopefully that isn't the case this year. Hopefully he's just able to turn on the Jets next week against the Raiders. But other than that, that needs to change. I need to see more from Najee Harris. Key number three, a new offensive coordinator. Oh, goodness. All of Pittsburgh, all of Steelers Nation, all of the angry Yinzers are begging, and I mean begging, for a new offensive coordinator because, oh my goodness, these plaguey calls are terrible to watch. The fact that I can call the play before it happens, the fact that I was watching this game with some of my friends, I was like, yeah, here comes the jet sweep. It was after the two very good Najee runs and a good Jalen Warren play. Like three straight first downs it was, the most of the whole game for the Steelers they had in one drive, and then out of nowhere, jet sweeps for loss of yardage. Um, then we had the play where they're trying to wind out the clock and Kenny Pickett does like a fake handoff to Najee and just gets like destroyed by the defensive line. And then they had to punt the ball away to the Browns who would have had a chance to take the lead if it wasn't for the Steelers defense holding them to the loss. So I will say this about the Steelers and their dip, the changes that need to be made offensive coordinator, please just please, please do it. Please make a change. Please break the trend of hiring within the organization. Go out and find someone new. Just please, we need a new offensive coordinator. I speak for all Steelers fans. They all want it. I want to see what Kenny Pickett can do with this offense. I want to see what this offense can do as a whole, not just Kenny Pickett. I want to see what Najee Harris can do with a new offensive coordinator because they're not helping him. So other than that, and I will say it, I have one more. Gunnar Oshesky, what, 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 what do we watch? That whole play with the um, toe tap on a kickoff, yeah, that was just confusing. And you know in the NFL, if you kick it out of bounds on kickoff, you're on the 40-yard line or so, he he doesn't let it go out of bounds. He catches it at the 10-yard line but does this cool little toe tap move. Like, why? What are you doing? And then his one target, he throws Kenny throws on the ball, and out of nowhere he just gets hammered by the defense and immediately fumbles it. And that was the weirdest fumble ever because the Steelers almost recovered it, went through their hands, and then, yeah, the Browns still got the ball. So, yeah, Gunnar Oshesky, I, I don't think he's going to last long on this team based off that performance and in the performances in the past. So, although the Steelers won, there is definitely changes that need to be made, definitely things that need adjusted, like Kenny Pickett still needs to adjust. Um, he still needs to improve. Najee Harris needs to figure his figure himself out. He needs to figure out what is going on with him uh, because I need to see improvement from Najee Harris. I know a lot of fans are waiting for that improvement. And number three, of course, Matt Canada. The day whenever he gets released will be one of the – probably go down as one of the biggest days for the Steelers fans. Um, But other than that, and then Gunnar Oshesky. Things that went well, on the other hand. Number one, the entire Steelers defense. Oh, my goodness. This – could be labeled the tj watt and um alex highsmith game you could also throw in a good old larry Ogunjobi in there he had a very good game himself cole holcomb very good game he he kind of struggled last week he looked pretty good minka was eh i don't know i didn't really see a lot from minka this game but he still stepped up he had that little chest injury but he seems to be fine I haven't really been impressed with Patrick Peterson yet, but I know he's it's there. But other than that, the thing that does scare me about the defense is the secondary so far. I have not really been high on Levi Wallace, and Pat Peterson has not been looking good in the backfield. But I will say this. The front of this defense, oh my goodness. T.J. Watt and... T.J. Watt, you could say, was the whole defense besides him and Alex Highsmith. Let's start with Highsmith. A pick six, the first throw of the game by Deshaun Watson. You couldn't script it any more better. A 30-yard pick six. Love to see it. He also had seven total tackles, five of those by himself, one sack, one tackle for a loss, one pass deflection, two quarterback hits, and a touchdown. TJ Watt adds to a campaign. He looks like he's trying to build another Depoy award win. Four Four total tackles. Two solos, one to- one sack, so now he has four. Two tackles for a loss, one pass deflection, four hits on the quarterback. This guy could have could have had five sacks tonight if you added that to his sack total. 
And speaking of sack totals, T.J. Watt is now the Steelers' franchise leader in total sacks. Big congratulations to T.J. Watt. By far, going to go down as one of the greatest Steelers of all time, in my opinion. He's one of the probably the best Pittsburgh athlete right now, active besides your Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin. You could even throw an Andrew McCutcheon in there just because of how popular he is. But T.J. Watt is one of those guys. He's definitely one of the best athletes in the city of Pittsburgh, if not the entire National Football League. And can this game please end the debate? Can we please stop talking about how Miles Garrett is miles better than T.J. Watt? No, 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 no. Miles Garrett today, well, yesterday, one total tackle. It was by himself. One QB hit, nothing else. He was shut down the whole game by the Steelers' offensive line, who still wasn't that good, but Miles Garrett couldn't defeat the Steelers' offensive line. That is known to not be that good. Miles Garrett is not better than TJ Watt. So please, I mean, please, just stop comparing them. TJ Watt has a defensive player of the year. Does Miles Garrett have that? No. So, there goes that little tangent about how T.J. Watt is miles better than Miles Garrett. So, look, I want to keep go back to what I was going to say here, but T.J. Watt is, has to be an early favorite for a Defensive Player of the Year. I know him and Micah Parsons are in that debate. T.J. Watt just looks on a different level this year. If we can get a full season of a healthy T.J. Watt, this could be the year he breaks the sack record just based off how he looks these first two games. He looks absolutely amazing. I want to look at his stats for the first two games of the season. Let's load these up. So, TJ Watt so far this season, seven solo tackles, four sacks, two forced fumbles, a touchdown on a fumble recovery. Yeah, TJ Watt is him he's been him it's time for fans outside of the pittsburgh steelers to put respect on tj watt's name his brother even went out there jj watt saying he is the best player defensive player in the nfl you know what just so anyone listening who doesn't believe me there i'm gonna pull up this tweet very quick on my phone what jj watt said about his younger brother tj he says in all caps, the word T.J. Watt, and then he goes back to lowercase. So he says, T.J. Watt is the best defensive player on the planet. Stop trying to question it. Stop trying to justify anyone else. He is the best. Period. 52,000 likes, 7,000 retweets. Amazing. And all the people in the comments says, Nah, Micah Parsons. Nah, Micah Parsons. No, it's T.J. Watt. I will always say T.J. Watt is the best defensive player on the planet right now. It is not even close. I think the only guy that is with there, up there with him is Micah Parsons, based on how Micah Parsons has looked since he was drafted. But T.J. Watt is on another level. 81 and a half sacks since he was drafted in 2017 is nuts. Absolutely crazy. He was picked number 30 in the draft. Just out of curiosity, I hear, I want to look up the draft that year. And we are going to see who was picked ahead of TJ Watt. Or if we were to, I guess, reorder the NFL draft in a certain order. Let's see here. So the Steelers did pick TJ Watt at number 30. So here we go. Number one pick. And there's some fun. This was a weird draft. I know this is supposed to be a breakdown of the game. Other than, I mean, this is basically turning into a TJ Watt episode because he's been amazing. First overall pick, Miles Garrett. Second overall pick, Mitchell Trubisky. Third overall, Solomon Thomas. Fourth overall, Leonard Fournette. Fifth, Corey Davis. Six, Jamal Adams. Seven, Mike Williams. Eight, Christian McCaffrey. Ninth, John Ross. Tenth, this man would probably go number one, well, should would go number one overall. Not should, not could, it's a would. Patrick Mahomes, if this was a redraft, he would be a Cleveland Brown if this was redrafted. So Patrick Mahomes, number 10. Marshawn Lattimore, 11. Deshaun Watson, 12th. Hassan Reddick, 13th. Derek Barnett, 14. Malik Hooker, 15. Marlon Humphrey, 16. Jonathan Allen, 17. Dory Jackson, 18. OJ Howard, 19. 
Garrett Bowles, 20. Number 21, Gerard Davis, 22. Charles Harris, number 23, Evan Ingram, 24. Garyon Conley, 25. Jabril Peppers, number 26. Takaris McKinley, 27. Tredarius White, number 28. Taco Charlton, number 29. The Cleveland Browns selected David and Joku, and right after the Browns picked, the Steelers picked T.J. Watt. And to round out that draft in the first round was Reuben Foster, 31, and then Ryan Ramzik, number 32. So T.J. Watt went 30. If I if I honestly redrafted this draft, it would go Mahomes. I think TJ Watt would be a bear in this situation, number two overall. Maybe if the Bears wanted Christian McCaffrey, you could put him there. I mean, other than that, I don't think there's a way TJ Watt falls below the top three. I really don't think so. I if this is a redraft, you have to put TJ Watt in the top three, or you are wrong. I think Miles Garrett's still a top five pick in this draft, but he is not a top three. It, it, the top three in this draft, if I redraft it, would be number one, Cleveland Browns take Patrick Mahomes. That's the easy answer. Number two, Chicago Bears. I think they would jump on TJ Watt if they knew how good he was going to be. And number three, San Francisco would get the guy they traded for in Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey in the draft went to the Panthers at eighth. He would jump up to three in this situation. But that I got a little bit out of hand there, a little bit um, off topic. So that's my little TJ Watt little rant because he is the best defensive player of all time. Right now, that is. He could go to, he's a Hall of Famer already. And the Steelers are in the situation where their, no net, their defense looked not good last week besides TJ Watt. But everyone in that locker room on defense stepped it up today, well, last night. They stepped it up. They looked miles better against a division foe that they needed to show up against before they go on this road trip. Because these next two games, if they lose one of those, I'm going to be upset because it's against the Raiders and it's against the Texans. And the Texans have not looked good. The Raiders, on the other hand, they just lost to the Bills 38-10. to So they're coming off a bad loss to Josh Allen and the Bills. And they got Jimmy Garoppolo at quarterback. It's not Derek Carr anymore. It's Jimmy G. So I think it was a downgrade at quarterback. Looking at the rest of what happened on defense, I want to take a look at Alex Highsmith. That man deserved his contract. Alex Highsmith, you know what? I, I've gotten a chance to meet Alex Highsmith. He came to our, my college. We took a picture together. He's such a nice guy. Very humble. Very humble football player. He's the type of player you would want to meet in real life. He's very genuine. He'll have a conversation with you so far this season in two games. Nine solo tackles, one sack, one forced fumble, one interception, and that was a pick six. So, he looks very good. And it's funny, against Cleveland yesterday, seven total tackles, five of them solo, two assists, one sack, one forced fumble, one pick. It was 30 yards. One pass deflection. Yeah, he looks amazing. Very much worth the contract extension. He deserved it. I'm so happy about Alex Highsmith being a Steeler for a couple more years. When Cam Hayward comes back, they're going to be looking good on defense. Now, I want to see more from Minka Fitzpatrick, but he still looked pretty good out there until his little injury. He should be fine, though. But I do want to bring up someone on defense that's not getting a lot of credit, and I already brought up his name, Larry Ogunjobi. He looked very good against the Cleveland Browns. I will gladly say that. Against Cleveland, Larry Ogunjobi. Let's pull this up. Pull up his statistics here because he deserves a lot of credit. Four total tackles, three solo, one sack, one tackle for a loss, two QB hits. The only guys with QB hits today for the Pittsburgh Steelers were Alex Highsmith with two, Larry Ogunjobi with two, TJ Watt with a whopping four, DeMarvin Leal, the second-year guy with one, Marcus Golden with one, Elijah Riley with one. Eliza Riley as well. Him and Marcus Golden as well had a sack. So, yeah, Larry Ogunjobi, I'm very happy he's still on the Steelers. I'm happy Omar Khan decided to resign him. He was amazing. Nothing but amazing play from this defense. They really stepped it up. I was really upset when Nick Herbig missed his chance at that sack last night, but still, when he came in, two total tackles, both of them by himself be solo tackles. Defense looked amazing. And I want to bring up one more player that had, I think, the game of his career. 
He was punting like his job was on the line, which he definitely probably thought it was. Presley Harvin the third had seven punts for a total of 321, 320 yards, average of 45.7 yards, only two touchbacks, and four of which landed within the 20-yard line. And his longest punt of the night, 61 yards. Where did this come from? Where has this Presley Harvin been? It's like we've seen these random 20-yard punts go out of bounds, but now 61-yard bombs? Where was this? This is amazing. His longest punt of his career is 69 yards. That is the longest of his career, and last night he was close to it. This season he is projected... Let's see, projections for this season. He is projected... 43 punts in the 20, 17 touchbacks. The long is 61, so he did get to his projection. So yeah, he's he's looking okay based off his projections, how it's going. But it it has not been good in the past. But yes, he looked amazing this this game. He looked absolutely amazing. So Presley Harvin, good day for him. You got to give him credit where it's due. Special teams was amazing. Chris Boswell did his job. Couple field goals there for him from far range. Longest was 52. He was two for two on the field goals, two for two on extra points, eight points on the day for him. The two two three pointers and then the two two extra points for eight points. He looked very good. Other than that, I'm happy the Steelers beat the Browns. I really am. I cannot stand the Cleveland Browns. But I will say this: I don't like winning games based off dramatic injuries and. You got to feel bad for Nick Chubb. That was a very bad injury for him to have. Nothing but respect for Nick Chubb. He's out for the year for Cleveland. Um, yeah, you you never like to see injuries like that because when I when before the season started, you see the whole thing with Joe Burrow in training camp with a calf or Achilles injury or whatever it was. He was fine, of course, but like even as a Steelers fan, I'm like. I want a fun season. I, I want competitive games. I, I You don't like seeing rivals lose their players like that. You do not. And thank goodness Joe Burrow is fine. And I, I know Steelers fans out there is like, how could you say that? You How would you want Joe Burrow to be healthy? Why wouldn't you want him healthy? That's just you're just a crazy diehard football fan that's like crazy. If you were hoping for people to be injured, no. And I was very happy with the Steelers fans in attendance at Acrisure Stadium. And you could tell by the reaction of the crowd how when they gasped all at the same time how bad that injury was for Nick Chubb. And you just got to put yourself in the situation where his parents are watching. And you know what's crazy? I saw a TikTok that night, like last night after the game, where this guy was, it was before the game, a Browns fan found Nick Chubb's mother in the Steelers game, in the Akersher Stadium crowd. So his mom was there, supposedly, I think that was his mom, was there, supposedly, to watch her son literally break his leg. Oh, goodness, I could not imagine. But yeah, prayers out to Nick Chubb. He was 10 for 64 before he went out, and Jerome Ford did a great job backing him up. 16 for 106, including a 69-yard rush that was a yard short of a touchdown to the house. So nothing but respect goes out to Nick Chubb. You got to hope for a speedy recovery. He's out for the year, I know, but you got to hope you can come back from that. People are saying it could be a career-ending injury. I hope it's not. Nick Chubb is very talented, and everyone's like, oh, my fantasy team. I don't care about your fantasy teams. I really don't. Even if he was on my fantasy team, you don't you don't hope for an injury like that. It's a tough position, and I've even brought up, this brings up the point of how running backs are replaceable, and it's crazy because Saquon Barkley was one of those guys wanting more money. Nick Chubb was on the forefront for that, and both those guys are now down with injuries. So, But that is a conversation for another day. Maybe another video I can get into this, but yeah. Nothing but respect goes out to Nick Chubb. Hope for the best for him. Because you never want to see a rival, even if it's on the Browns, and I don't like the Browns, you never want to see a rival go down like that at all. I want healthy competition. I want good games. 
And seeing someone break their leg like that, no. And I saw, they did a great job on ESPN and ABC not showing the replay. But when you go on Twitter and stuff, it's everywhere. You'll see the you'll see the play. You'll see the the guy break his leg. Ugh. It basically went 90 degrees to dis- to explain it. Uh yeah. And as I'm reading as as I'm talking about that I gasp because like the Pirates just lost a lot of grand slam. They're getting murdered. Good old Cubbies. They they own the Pirates this year. Pirates are probably going to be going down to 70 and 81. Which I will say, I picked seventy-five wins. This turned into a Pirates episode. I'm gonna, I'm planning on making a Pirates post postseason video, like because they're not making postseason, but like you could say postseason as season recap because it's been a long year. I'm more so of a Buckos fan, but like I love talking about the Steelers too. But yeah, you never want to see Nick Chubb go down like that. But in other news, looking ahead for what the Steelers can do. So in this video, we hardly really talked about the game like I did in the last video because like. This game, for me, became all about TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith, and then the Nick Chubb storyline. I'm happy the Steelers won. It was messy, don't get me wrong, but they won. Let's look ahead and see what the Steelers got on schedule coming up for the next three games. So, as this loads, next week, Sunday Night Football, September 24th on NBC at the Vegas Raiders. October 1st at 1 o'clock on CBS at the Houston Texans. And then they return home on October 8th at 1 o'clock on CBS against the Baltimore Ravens. So, what do I expect from these games? I think I picked the Steelers to beat the Browns with as little bias as possible. For this Raiders game coming up, um, I am actually still going to take the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, right now, the Ste- this is a very close game on matchup predictor for ESPN. They have... The Raiders with a 50.8% chance to win. The Steelers with 48.8% chance. Looking at these matchups, um, it's going to be through the air because both running backs, Najee Harris and Josh Jacobs, are having terrible starts to their year. Najee Harris so far this season, 16 for 74. Josh Jacobs is 28 for 46. No one's talking about him not being good. But both teams, 1-1. One and one. Receiving leaders for both teams, Pickens, 9 receptions, 163 yards and a touchdown. For the Raiders, Devontae Adams, of course, 12 receptions, 150 yards, and a touchdown. Passing yard leaders for the Steelers, it's, of course, Kenny Pickett. He's 46-76, 454 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions. Jimmy Garoppolo, 36-50, 385 yards, three touchdowns, and three interceptions. So if you want to look at it passing yard-wise, Pickett's just slightly better than Garoppolo. I mean, he has one more interception than touchdown, but still, it is what it is. I think the Steelers do win this game. I think it's another close game because they have issues against the Vegas Raiders. Um, going to be out for the Steelers, though, on the IR, Deontay Johnson and Anthony McFarland. Questionables are Gunnar, Gunnar Oshesky, Minka Fitzpatrick, Alandon Roberts. Um, key guys that could be out and are questionable for the Raiders are Chandler Jones, their defensive end, and Jacoby Myers, one of their wide receivers. Um, total pa- Total yards this year. On average, 275 yards for the Steelers, 250 and a half for the Raiders. Passing yards is 227 and 192 in favor of the Steel and a half in favor of the Steelers. Rushing yards is 58 to 48 in favor of the Raiders. Yeah, rushing game has not been working out. Um, yards allowed, this is very inflated because of that first game, but 420 and a half to 364. So the Raiders are winning that category because they've allowed less. Pass yards allowed on average. 227 and a half to 225 and a half. So the Raiders allow two yards less. Rush yards allowed 193 to 138 and a half in favor of the Raiders. So the Raiders defense has looked better uh, stat wise, but you know what? That is just because of that first game, the 37 loss against the 49ers. So it's been a fun episode. This kind of became a TJ Watt is better than your favorite player rant. It became a tribute and a hope for the best for Nick Chubb. It was just a weird. It was a weird Monday Night Football game to all those to all of you listening out there. It, it was weird, but yeah, it's been fun. Steelers are one and one. Let's take a take. Let's you know what. Let's take a quick little look at the standings here in the NFL. So for the AFC East, go, we'll go down AFC East, North, South, West in that order. Dolphins lead the way two and zero at one and one are the Jets and Bills. Zero and two are the Patriots in the AFC North. 
Baltimore 2-0. 1-1 are the Steelers and Browns, and the Bengals are 0-2. Who would have thought that? Bengals have not looked good. AFC South, Jaguars and Colts 1-1, along with the Titans. They are also 1-1, the Texans are 0-2. The AFC West... 1-1 1-1 one one are the Raiders and Chiefs, and then 0-2 oh are the Chargers and Broncos. Chargers, they need to get they need to get themselves going. They are lucky the Chiefs are also 1-1 one because one, the Chiefs could start running away with this if the Chargers do not pick themselves up. In the NFC, um, in the NFC East, it's became, it went from the NFC least to the NFC beast, you could call it. Three teams are 2-0, and oh, the Cowboys, Eagles, and Commanders, and then the Giants are 1-1. One the NFC North, the Packers and Lions are 1-1. Vikings, Bears, 0-2. Vikings need to get it going. NFC South, who would have knew three teams in this division would be 2-0? Atlanta, New Orleans, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, all 2-0. The Panthers, 0-2. And in the NFC West, the San Francisco 49ers, 2-0. The Rams are 1-1, along with the Seahawks at 1-1. And then the Cardinals are 0-2. If I, just for fun every week, let's do a quick little Super Bowl prediction of the week based off what I am watching on TV the teams that look like they could go to the Super Bowl the way they are playing now, if you'd made a Super Bowl out of only the first two weeks, would be probably the Miami Dolphins. And just for fun, I know they won't make it, but the Dallas Cowboys. That defense looks amazing. It's either Dallas or San Francisco. I'm right. I'm honestly going to pick San Francisco to make it to the Super Bowl and possibly win it this year. But at the same time, I know what they can do in the playoffs. I know they always can come up that little game short. But the Cowboys, if you you got to take them right now. I don't know why. I know they're going to choke in the playoffs, but this team looks amazing on defense. That defense looks absolutely amazing. They are carrying people's fantasy teams. But yeah, this became a Steelers little mini recap, TJ Watt video, Nick Chubb video, and then season predictions. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. I'm just rambling. It's 1130 at night. I got to get ready to go to bed. I'm tired. What a day. But yeah, it's been a fun video. It's been a it's been fun talking football. So yeah, this is episode two of Steelers recaps. Steelers beat the Cleveland Browns twenty six to twenty two. I have been your host Nathan Osler. It's been fun. Thank you for listening, and we will see you next week.